get started, I just want to do one thing. You heard, um, you heard Richard call out Southwest, that they've been doing APIs for a very long time. We announced a little while ago that they were joining the NBC Exchange family, and we were really happy about that. Um, I have the honor now of giving them something we've been working on really hard, and my team is here, and good job team to get this done so quickly, but this is the uh, NDC Level 3 certification for Southwest. Thank you. Okay. Wow. Who, who didn't say wow after Richard spoke? Wow. <laughs> uh, so. Um, I'm going to start just across the board. Probably you'll start with you, uh, Rob. Um, so we talked with this. This has been a lot about infrastructure and a lot about speed to market um, and, and efficiency and getting, getting up to speed on NDC and, and, and getting connected quickly. Um, maybe you can comment, having someone that's been around with APIs for a long time and successfully. Um, Maybe you can just comment a bit about your journey to NDC and how that's working out for you. Absolutely. Uh, well, as Richard mentioned and as Graham mentioned, Southwest has had an API in the marketplace for a number of years now. It's been very successful. Uh, when we started our API channel strategy uh, back in 2009 or so, that was prior to NDC sort of coming into uh, the marketplace and being talked about. So. Our API was built on OTA uh, specs at the time. And to this day, uh, our API uh, is doing very well for us. It is allowing us to do all of the things that we want to do with a direct channel through our API, offering all of the services uh, that we want to offer from a fair perspective and from an experience perspective. So it's been a very successful channel for us. I will say that um, over the recent years with the talk of NDC, gaining momentum, we have certainly had to uh, sort of take a step back and say, with our API, what is going to be our next step? How, what, what strategies will we use in, to ensure that as NDC becomes more and more of a standardized process that we are not left behind? So uh, that's one of the reasons why we took a close look at uh, ATPCO and the NDC exchange. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we would be able to sort of dip our toe in the water a little bit in terms of the NDC experience without having to make wholesale changes internally with our API because, again, it was delivering everything that we wanted it to. Uh, but we also wanted to make sure that we were being true to our customers and being true to our shareholders and our employees by uh, ensuring that we keep an eye on where things were going from a future perspective with NDC. So we partnered with uh, AT Pico and to partner with a, um, uh, someone like AT Pico where it is uh, sort of a centralized uh, partner that you can work through, it does allow for a lot of efficiencies and we, we, we're starting to realize that even today. Uh, it is a one connection for us from an API perspective, but it also allows us to manage which partners we want to bring on. Uh, on the other side of that exchange. So not only is it efficient from a cost and timing perspective, but speed to market in terms of uh, introducing new partners into our channel portfolio from an API perspective. We've seen um, some great success there as well. In fact, uh, we, we can uh, firmly announce that we are live with Amtrav uh, and taking bookings with Amtrav through uh, the NDC exchange. So. We're very excited about that partner uh, and their ability to come to the table. Yeah, certainly. Um, we're excited about that partner being able to come to the table and help us deliver this experience from an NDC perspective, again, dipping our toe in the water. We've got others in the pipeline, but we're very excited about what we've seen uh, with the partnership with AG Pico and with Amtrav. Thanks for that. Uh, I did forget to mention, sorry. Um, Use your app if you have any questions for anybody as well. Just, just fire them up here and we'll try to get through them all. Can you give us a bit of a experience that uh, United's had with uh, NDC? You've been, I mean, you and I have been in Geneva more times than we mm -hmm. want to admit probably over the last <laughs> 10 years, but maybe you could just talk a bit about wh where you've been and where you're going and sure. how things are at United. <clears throat> and thanks for having me, Graham. Um, I started working on NDC back in 2013, I think. Um, 
my first meeting was in Nice. That was my first NDC meeting. And um, by the end of the meeting, I was elected chair of some booking shopping group. I had no idea what I was doing, uh, but it was exciting. And I thought, this is going to change the world. This is, this is cool stuff. So now we're at 2019. United is level four certified. Um, we use Fairlogix to bring our NDC API to the market. Um, we have everything from shopping, booking, pay, ticket, exchange, cancel, refund, um, and this really cool feature that I'm proud of called Dynamic Bundled Fares. My colleague Curtis will talk a little bit about that uh, later in the conference, but we're really starting to show the promise of what can be delivered. Uh, Trip Actions, the, the screenshot unfortunately didn't show it, but that second column, it's a new fare that we're excited about bringing to market, which is the combination of a base fare, an ATP co filed fare, plus a collection of ancillaries. We call it a dynamic bundled fare. What's really cool about that is it's really the promise of NDC. It is how can I tailor offers for my corporate travelers and put them in front of them in the initial shopping results in a meaningful way. So that's, that's really exciting. And of course, working uh, with the NGS storefront, that's, NDC doesn't make the display better. NDC allows me to get the content out there. NGS is where the magic happens, where we bring all of it together. The great content and a great way of displaying it and helping the customers understand in this sort of um, uh, west to east view of the content. So uh, we're making great progress. We're with the launch uh, carrier with um, globally with Sabre. We're working with all the GDSs to bring NDC uh, to market, and we're also doing quite a few uh, direct implementations as well. Um, I'd like for it to mu go much faster, uh, but good things are happening. Cool. Well, just a comment, without picking a fight with Richard, you're on the leaderboard? Yeah. 2020? What's yep. it feel like? Um, Kathy Morgan and I are going to have to discuss this, uh, <laughs> but hopefully we can make 20% happen. Uh, and all the GDSs, by the way, but I, I think he's right in that if a GDS turns the switch, and by the way, they're the ones with their hand on the volume knob. Uh, and so if, if the way that we've implemented it, if they're comfortable with that, if the agencies are comfortable with that, I think it can go pretty quickly. Good. I hope he's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people hope he's wrong. Um, Circo, tell us your um, story. Yeah, I would, I would say Circo as a company embraced NDC almost from the beginning. I think that one of our founders, Bob Shaw, um, was on top of it and really drove the company along. Like sometimes there were a lot of obstacles in his way, but at the end of the day, um, he, we, we've embraced it from the beginning. And I think, and really understood that it's all about uh, providing choice and content and, and, and everything to the, the travelers so that they can make the right decisions. Um, ha having said that though, there are a lot of challenges from, a, from an online booking technology company uh, to provide that because you have to then become a, a multi-channel um, search engine, those kinds of things, so that you can go out and get content from, from um, not only the GDSs but other direct connects and APIs and those things, which, which creates issues. But again, we have dealt with that and I think we've embraced it from the beginning. We, had, we were the first ones to understand it and, and really um, bring in the route happy content so we could begin to show the retail and everything. Um, we feel like we're, we're aligned and, and moving in the right direction. I think the challenge out in the marketplace as, we, as this evolves is that the, it, the TMC network in many respects. They just, they're, they're individual TMCs like TripAction, Amtrav and that who have their own kind of technology and, and everything and they've gone out and, and they've solved for their own customer base. But there are a lot of other TMCs out there that are, um, have kind of and they'll kill me for probably saying, but basically cobbled together their, their tech stack. And they're trying to, they're sitting there saying, I like what I see, but I don't know how I'm gonna, I'm gonna, how I'm gonna apply this without a lot of cost and, and effort and everything. Um, I think as we move forward on this, I'm, I'm hearing and, and seeing every day that, that there's a lot of benefit from, from an airline perspective on upselling, those kinds of things. So I think we just have to figure out what the model is as we move forward on it. But that, that's the, to me, that's the next challenge that really needs to be solved for if, if we're going to scale with NDC. Right. So travel air pros. Um, yep. You know, you tell, just, just give us two words on you know, what you guys are good at, and then tell me about the NDC journey. Sure. I mean, we first at Travel Air and now Pros, we've been 
investing in NDC, you know, for several years now as well. Um, I agree with, a lot with what Richard said earlier. Um, for the last year, we've been working with um, a major airline and ATP Co. NDC Exchange, and so we've been building on top of it. And so we look at it from maybe more of a, a tactical or a practical standpoint, because what we've been trying to do is actually build a replacement or um, in addition to a booking engine, a consumer booking engine. So when you, when you try to, to build a, a full booking engine, um, that's exactly the same as an existing airline booking is and using NDC, um, you have challenges. Even though um, everything could be great with uh, ATP Co. NDC Exchange, the airlines are really only as good as the APIs and the web services beneath the NDC. So as Richard was saying earlier, um, a lot of PSSs, the web services you get from the PSS, don't support all the necessary functionality. Uh, a good one we found is, um, you know, a PSS doesn't support, not all of them support uh, paying with, for example, points uh, for ancillaries and some of the things that customers really want. So the other problem is, is that, um, you know, we, I was, uh, we wouldn't, we're going to launch, I guess, the, really the first full booking engine that could be an airline replacement from a PSS only through NDC later this year. Um, <clears throat> and this morning I was doing a demo with it uh, for people who wanted to see. Uh, it's very exciting. Uh, we're very proud of what we built, but um, there was some components that were down today. And so we put in a support ticket with ATPCO and they're like, oh, we want to help you guys solve this, but this actually isn't us. It's actually the airline's web services uh, ha is down today. So, one of the problems that we see is that um, with so many different levels, from the PSS, potentially another provider on top of that, then ATP Co. NDC Exchange, then Pros Retail on top of that, um, then a user interface on top of that, there's a lot of areas where things can go wrong. And from an infrastructure standpoint, um, I think the strategy of, of Southwest and other airlines who have had APIs as part of their core strategy, not just a user interface <clears throat> or a mobile app, but APIs to the same type of content um, is what most airlines don't have. And until they actually have those APIs, it's very difficult to move forward with an NDC uh, strategy. Yeah, good, good point. Can I pull a non sequitur real quick? <laughs> Great, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I was just thinking, one of the things that's interesting, in my view, NDC is the foundation, and then one order comes next. And so one order is where we start to get rid of things like tickets and structured PNR uh, databases. And we really start to move forward and become retailers, real retailers. And so what does a PSS system look like in 10 years from now? Does it have a PNR database? Is it res inventory DCS? Or is it what Amazon runs on? Or is it SAP Hybris or something totally different? Do you need a PSS in 10 years from now? So not to freak out anyone in the audience, but um, you know, do, do the GDSs that currently run PSSs become, um, like Richard was saying, uh, you know, the, the only providers of that technology into the future? And I think NDC and One Order open up the opportunity for lots of other people to potentially offer technology in, the, in what we currently call the PSS space. Richard's gonna get a lot busier once he has to start um, figuring out how all those work together. <laughs> so, so if the, I think we're all, we're all kind of at the same place now that NDC is something that's real, NDC is gaining adoption and traction, there's, there's certainly some unsolved issues still or gaps. And that's, that's probably the next question is, is, you know, we've been working at this a long time. I think uh, the, the standards have helped a lot in get us, it, certainly focusing the conversation. Uh, we're, we're having conversations as an industry that we weren't having before. Um, and if the goal is scale, and it's taken us eight years to get to where we are, um, what's, what needs to happen for us to achieve acceptable scale quickly, in your guys' opinion? I think uh, just continued uh, acceptance of new technologies and uh, acceptance of doing 
uh, business in new ways. I think that when NDC initially launched, there was reluctance to accept um, some of the things that were, were being asked of that particular technology by some of the suppliers. But I think it's now gaining momentum, and I think that's why we're starting to uh, see more and more um, airlines and more and more uh, third parties being more accepting of NDC. So I think it's just more uh, continue, uh, a continued learning environment and adoption of the new technology. I have the need, the need for speed. <laughs> Um, and so I need my shopping results to go faster. So um, there's some folks in the audience that can help me do that. And uh, I think that's the big thing. Get it out there, make it quick, make it um, relevant to customers. It's the build it and they will come, right? I'm sorry for all these movie cliche references, <laughs> but uh, it is the case that if I can put better content through there that's meaningful to my customer and do it fast and seamlessly, they'll come to it. Yeah, I think, I think the, um the, the biggest challenge really is now the next step to the, as I said, the, the, the indirect channel. You've got to, just making it easy for them. There are a lot of them, a lot of TMCs who are sitting out there waiting to understand how it fits into their existing technology and how much work, is, how much work am I going to have to put in, what's my cost going to be, and, and what the revenue model is. That, if those things can be solved quickly, the scale, it will scale very fast because you've got a lot of TMCs out there who like what they see, they just don't know how it's going to fit in for them. And um, if we, you know, there's been a lot of talk today about an end-to-end -end, um, and I th process, and I think that um, somewhere in that discussion, you've got to begin to think about how it affects that indirect seller, if you will, and, and how you make it easy for them to fit it into what they're doing today. The easier you can do it, make it, um, the faster they're going to adopt, because it's all, it, it is a much, much better experience for the traveler and, and all of those kinds of things. And the other piece is then how do you, in the corporate world anyway, how, how do you wrap policy around that? Um, because you've got a lot of travel managers who are sitting out there saying, this is all great, but we, we're not going to approve you know, upgrade seats and those kinds of things. So how, how do companies like Circo uh, enable policy around that and approval process? So those are just things that just, I think it's, it's phase two of this whole right, effort right, right now. Because the airlines, are, the momentum is there. It's going to happen. I think if we were sitting here three, four years ago, it was kind of a if. Now it's really, it's going to happen. Yeah. How do you, how do you um, implement and apply it? So. Same question. Yeah, I think, um, you know, there's a lot of airlines that sort of have a wait and see attitude with NDC. Um, those that are ready to move forward, maybe, you know, one of the executives have said, hey, you have a budget for NDC. And they're starting to look for an NDC solution before they really even have a direct uh, channel uh, distribution strategy. Because there's a lot of ways to distribute airline direct that's not just NDC. There's a lot of people that want other APIs to be able to connect. Um, I think also airlines should not be scared of NDC. I think um, someone said earlier about failing fast. Um, NDC doesn't have to be expensive. Um, get out there with a partner that's flexible and agile, run a POC, try to do something. Don't do a two-year project or an RFP to, you know, bring in DC in-house. Um, move quickly, try something out, see what works for you. Um, you know, a lot of people we see today, they're, they're trying to make NDC a separate sort of platform where really it should be part of your core retailing platform where you have Airline Direct, you have APIs, you have NDC, and that's what their focus should be on, not necessarily just on an NDC solution. Um, but, you know, my advice to airlines is try it. Move forward, do something, you know, get some results. I mean. We've learned more working with ATPCO NDC Exchange with a real airline trying to build a, a full-scale booking engine that can go live to consumers than we ever did just doing the various certifications to become NDC capable. So have we. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> so we have, uh, we're going to go over for sure, but that's okay, I think. We won't ask permission. We'll ask for forgiveness better. Um, just one more quick question, probably, and that's, and that's around, you mentioned NGS um, and how, and, and one order, and how all these things link together. The question, and you gave some advice to airlines, what they should do, the question is, can you give an, an advice to ATPCO on how we can help your journey? What, what can we do to make things easier, better, faster for you guys? 
Well, I think uh, just from our experience, um, we've uh, enjoyed the engagement that we've had with, with ATPCO. I think continue to uh, ask questions like this of the airlines and understand where they are headed with their channel strategy and ensure that you align uh, with that strategy, not just for one airline, but for the industry as a whole. And I think also to, to the point that, Richard, uh, that Rich raised earlier, uh, making sure that uh, the experience that we build out will be a solution that is streamlined for all parties, for the airline, for the TMC, for the CTM, and for their, uh, their travelers. Okay. Ty? Uh, I agree. I, I think as we get deeper into this, the TMCs and agencies will teach us where we need to help them. And so it's, if ATP Co remains nimble uh, enough to react to those needs, I think that's important. Help us solve those gaps that are stopping um, uh, adoption. Mid office, back office, a lot of the things that stop agencies from being able to truly connect. Uh, there are a lot of downline systems. Does anyone want to build an um, NDC capable uh, back office accounting platform? Uh, please. Maybe. So, you know, there's things like that that we uh, should, should figure out together. Yeah, cool. And from the seller side? I, I would say um, take the learnings from the initial airlines as they've integrated in and, and worked with some of the, the partners like Serco and some of the others who have, and, and, and apply those to the, to the next airline that comes yep. in. So, so it becomes more efficient every time a new one comes in. Just take the learnings and not, and not, just, not just start from scratch every time. So, yeah. Well, I mean, I think you guys already do a great job of working with our team. I mean, it's, it's like we're working together for the success of the, the airlines. I think more education needs to go into what it means for an airline to want to move to being NDC certified and, ca and capable. Um, they have to get their house in order with regard to APIs, the appropriate APIs, and making sure they're supplied. And then, I think as I told you yesterday, we need some way of monitoring <laughs> where things are going down in the downstream chain and you know how to improve efficiencies because eventually um, if we get to the big number that everyone hopes with NDC, when something doesn't work there's finger pointing and you need to find out who's accountable for why something doesn't work. Um, the other thing I would just say is that <clears throat> people don't talk a lot about how NDC will affect the overall customer experience. And I think that's part of what airlines should be looking at is, it's one thing to have an airline direct distribution strategy, but it's how is NDC actually going to affect that customer experience? I think it was Joe talking about earlier with Apex. I love it when people talk about UX and customer experience, but in the context of NDC, you rarely hear the word customer experience and uh, what are airlines going to do in addition to the NDC APIs to ensure that across all the digital touch points, that they're actually, NDC's representing their brand in the right way through content, through visuals, et cetera. The one thing I would add also that I, I wanted to mention too that ATP Co could I think help, can help with, or somebody can, is that as it's moving much more to a retail model, you've got a situation out there where everybody is embracing that, but there's a very low level of knowledge about how to present things and, and you know look to book ratios, those kinds of things, and give guidance to the, 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 the sellers, if you will, that you know, this is how it's presented, but maybe you know, you're comparing it to different airlines or different way it's presented so that they maximize right. and everybody learns from, from this very quickly because that'll help scale it also. Yeah, mm -hmm. good point. Okay, we're four minutes and 44 seconds too long, so we're done. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys, for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.